Hi everyone, this video follows on from my previous video introducing the idea of entropy and statistical mechanics. So if you haven't seen that, I strongly suggest you go and see that and this will make a lot more sense. So what we're going to do in this video is derive this equation for entropy here, S is equal to KB ln omega, where omega is the number of associated microstates with the macro state our system is in. And we're going to do that using the first law of thermodynamics, as well as the definition for temperature, which we derived in an earlier video, the statistical basis for temperature. So the first law of thermodynamics says that if we have some system and that system has internal energy equal to U, then if we change the internal energy of that system, which I've written as DU, D means a very small change. So a very small change in the internal energy of the system is equal to dq, which is the heat we put into the system, the small bit of heat we put into the system, plus dw, which is the small bit of work we put into the system, the work we do on the system. So this is essentially the conservation of energy, but it's saying that heat is a form of energy, and that's the first law of thermodynamics. So let's dive into this a bit further, and what we're going to do first of all is recall another qu equation from uh, mechanics, which is that force, capital F, is equal to pressure times area. Now I'm not going to go into that equation now, but that's a fairly standard equation. You can certainly look that up and how to derive that. Um, so F equals PA um, and work done, or rather actually let's say that if we have some area and we extend that area in a third dimension by a very small amount, which I write as DX, then ADX is equal to some small volume, right? We have an area, we extend it a little bit. So now we have some small volume, which I write as DV. Okay, now, what's, um, what is work done? Well, work done is force times distance. If I apply a force over a certain amount of distance, then that is equal to the work I am doing. So to work out an infinitesimal bit of work, DW, what I have to do is take my force and apply that force over some small distance, dx. Um, and what is force? Well, force is pressure times area. So this is equal to P A dx. Um, and A dx is equal to dv. So this is equal to P dv. Um, but there's one other thing which I didn't clarify earlier, which is if I am putting work into my system, if I have a box of gas and I am putting work into that system by applying a force, then I am compressing the system, right? I am applying a force along dx into that system. I'm making the volume of that system a little bit smaller. So we actually need a minus sign here, right? Because as I apply that force, as I put work into the system, I'm compressing it a little bit. So the change in volume um, makes the system smaller. So we have dw is equal to minus pdv. So that's our first step. So now we have du is equal to dq minus pdv. And then you'll also recall from our video on thermal entropy that we defined thermal um, entropy ds, so some small change in thermal entropy, is equal to dq over t. So we multiply both sides of here by t, so we get dq is equal to t multiplied by ds. So now we have du is equal to t ds minus p dv. And this is actually a very common way of stating the first law of thermodynamics, because there are a lot more things we can do with this definition than with this definition. So this is a very important one to learn if you are studying thermal physics. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to say, let's, um, let's keep the volume of our system constant. Let's hold it at a constant volume and let's work out the, um, the change in, um, in our system with, with regards to entropy. So what we're working out is du by ds at constant volume, right? So these are partial derivatives. And this is basically saying we are differentiating the internal energy with respect to the entropy holding the volume constant. And what does this equal? 
Well, dV is equal to zero. There's no change in volume, so this term just goes. And then we have T dS by dS. Well, the dS is cancel, so this is just equal to temperature, right? So now what we can do is, um, is invert each side of this. So we have 1 over T is equal to dS by du at constant V. And we're nearly there because in an earlier video, um, if you go back and look at a statistical definition for temperature, the formula we arrived at there is 1 over KBT is equal to d ln omega by dE, where E is the energy of our system. So this is the formula we derived when we were looking at a statistical definition for temperature. And this formula we have derived with our thermal definition of entropy. So all that's left to do is compare these two. And hopefully you can see that that motivates the choice that S is equal to Kb ln omega. Right? Because these are both related to temperature, we can make this immediately um, this immediate jump to get this definition of entropy. And that is the proof of how the statistical definition of entropy in terms of the number of microstates is the same as the thermal definition of entropy, which was equal to dQ over T. So two very, very disparate ways of thinking about entropy. One in terms of heat transfer and temperature, the other in terms of microstates and macrostates, but they're actually perfectly equivalent. And there's actually another way of looking at entropy. Some people think it's the most fundamental way of looking at entropy, and that is in terms of probability, and that's called the Shannon entropy. And we will be getting to that in due course as well. Um, we're also going to be looking at Maxwell's demon next, and we're going to be covering Boltzmann distributions and getting into a bit more maths. So I look forward to going through all that with you then. Goodbye.